Hey guys, this is an old update on my Deep Blue Professional Rimless Tank here. Uh, if you've been following my updates on my tank, you can see uh, right away there's major changes that happen in my tank. Uh, for the worse, uh, mainly because I put this product of uh, Ruby Reef Rally in my tank. Unfortunately, my pH probe on my, uh, my uh, controller, it's, it just needed to be recalibrated. And unfortunately, it did not pick up my pH dropping uh, below to 7.8. Um, and at that time, I lost a handful of coral, and my clam just distressed alone. I seen it perish in a few days after, which was the last one to go uh, through the pH drop. My Xenia colony that had grown for two and a half years uh, completely perished. Actually, this piece it was through a trade. Um, for my sun coral, uh, and only one stalk actually survived the transfer. I did buy this uh, four-headed frog spawn that's green with I think little purple tips. Um, my plate coral. If you see my uh, one of my overstock video that I just purchased, that perished right away, uh, along with my yellow. Gorgonian, which was open pretty much most of the day. Uh, it was a really cool sea fan, really hard to get, and it was photosynthetic. Unfortunately, that perished and melted right away. Uh, I, I just didn't know, maybe because it was the newest one, but my purple uh, sea fan here, or Gorgonian, uh, survived, and it's still kicking after two and a half years. Uh, my rose bubble tip anemone still doing good. So even with the pH drop, I know anemones are not the supposed to be the uh, easiest out there, but um, this guy uh, is still doing very well. As you see, it has a nice little bubble to it. It has like that watermelon color to it with the green on the base and uh, the red on the tips. Um, and the reason why I put this Ruby Reef Rally uh, was because uh, it was recommended by one live fish store, which I guess it's snake oil compared to uh, but the media, but as you can see, my Bavonius here has a mark on him, and I actually, if you look at what web media, you actually can see the uh, email I sent them, and they posted the pictures and the response, and just say it was physical trauma, could have been a bite mark, could have been one of my clownfish because they, they look like they're about to have very, uh, babies. They're not too aggressive with my fish, with territory wise, but I do um, see the male chase the. Uh, my flame back here once in a while once you're on the overhang. It's not aggressive, super aggressive, but you know, again, the clownfish are the, the most aggressive fish in my tank and they're not really aggressive. They're just, you know, probably gonna have babies soon, I think. Um, the female is always on that frog spawn, which is, it, uh, I wish go to the rose bubble, but since they're tank raised fish, uh, you know, there's always a gamble that they don't host, but they, this what they like and that's where they're gonna stay. So, again, there's just, Terrible, terrible, um, you know, downfall of my tank. Uh, things are still kicking. I mean, my frog spawn and, and torches and hammers, they didn't get affected. I did buy this uh, Monty right here, uh, this cap here, so hopefully it starts growing. Um, I got this cool uh, cocoa worm. I got this, it's like an orange, I say orange reddish color. And then I have, the, again, the pink one that's doing well. Uh, if you see this big pile of sand, and I put some rubble here, I got a new addition in my tank. Hopefully, he can show his face. Uh, but I did get another blue-spotted jawfish, and I hesitated buying another one just because it was a rimless tank, and now I got this lid on. Uh, I decided to get another one. I know it's making wreaking havoc. I have to blow sand off this rock every day just so nothing gets covered. But while it's making its new home, it had found a nice spot in between these rocks. Um, it's going to be uh, a cool addition to my tank. I do love the blue dot jawfish. They're just a cool species. They interact the way they look. As you see, some sand was getting thrown there. Maybe, if, let me see here, this goby, um, still doing good. I don't know where the sand's coming from. It usually hangs around, around the top there. Uh, but the yellow sponge, uh, that's another thing I did lose, just talking about the sponge here. It fell apart in a lot of spots. I mean, I still have sponge all over all over this tank in different areas, but the main loss was over here, 
that I showed in one of my other videos but it seems to be slowly to recover so hopefully it starts growing again uh, sponge is considered a hard thing to grow in tanks and it seems to be uh, pretty good in my tank as you can see I have blue sponge all over the place that's growing that I just put a little piece and it just expanded um, so again the uh, Bobonius is going to have that mark for probably a long you know for the rest of its life but uh, there was no infection that was the main reason why I put that rally in just because it was supposed to stop fin rot or, or kill flukes or whatever and it's supposed to be reef safe unfortunately uh, like I said in that video that I did my, uh, re the review on it, um, it just didn't really have no real effects to it, and uh, it lowered my pH, which I lost a lot of expensive coral. Um, the guy from what with media, Bob Fenner, he said that it's snake oil. So, guys, if you're looking to uh, put something in your tank, I mean, do your research. I mean, I try to do some research. Sometimes what with media, it's a great website. Sometimes it's just a little too hard to uh, scan through it to find out exactly everything. As you see my mandarin, he loves to go against the window when he has the light on. He sees the reflection, thinks it's another male, and he starts flashing. Flameback angel still doing great. My eel's doing great as usual. I have uh, the babonis still eating off the stick, krill off the stick. I even have my blue uh, striped pipe fish, the little, little guys that are floating around my tank. You can see, I don't know if you caught them a little bit. It was not in focus, but they eat the krill off the stick. They'll go, at least the male does. The female's more shy but the male he's more bold and uh, he eats off the stick like my other fish my uh, butterfly eat off my hand with the krill but Boney's not yet the jawfish eats the krill off the stick too as well hopefully he pops his little head out I think he's just working on his burrow because I see sand get tossed here and there and uh, let me see if I can get a good angle maybe it's oh there's this here more sand getting tossed around. So he's making some, some progress over here. Um, I don't know what he's doing in there, but pretty cool. He's making a big, big hole in there. And there's actually a real, like, a cave in there, but I think he feels comfortable. He has different exit areas and just making it his home there. There's no fish really uh, sitting there, so... Uh, the Naoki uh, fairy rest is doing awesome. Just lo loving this tank. I did get an old sexy shrimp. I should have a total of three sexy shrimp. And they like hanging on this uh, this ruffled coral here. I don't know. They usually hang where you can't. If you see on the top there, I see two. There should be three all together. I see two of the three. One should be hiding somewhere else. But, but they like to be in groups. So I got three in there. It's a good number to have. And um, that's it so far my updates my tank. Again, um, disaster struck my tank. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, sometimes it happens in a hobby. You're going to have a mini crash or something. And normally I hate putting things in my tank, but I was just worried about this fish. Um, he's still very healthy. Based on the uh, feedback that I got from uh, the Wet Wet Media crew, is that the fish will be fine. He's just going to have a little scar on him. Uh, unless it heals, but I don't, the way it looks, it looks like it's going to be um, scarred for the rest of his life. But uh, as long as he's healthy and swims around and is happy in his tank, I'm pretty good with that. Um, here's my little pike fish there. Here. As you can see, they're doing a little swing around. I got sand all over my glass now. I guess the jawfish. And I knew that it was going to happen. I had jawfish in the past. I actually paired up a pair of jawfish uh, that were friendly as you can see and but jawfish yeah, especially the blue dots if they uh they'll fight each other and kill each other because they don't like each other if they're two males and uh i was able to successfully have two in the same tank and one was introduced maybe about nine months later than the other one so uh just one of my favorite cool species but they are jumpers and if you're going to keep one of these guys make sure you have a tight lip tank make sure you give them a lot of rubble to, to build their den and they make some cool structures. Uh, so I crushed a lot of live rock and, and gave it to him and see what uh, he does with it. But um, can't get him on camera right now before he hangs out all day. But uh, right now he can't can't get him on the on the video. So uh, the coral croucher still loves that little hole, as you can see right there, just above the uh, cocoa worm here, and it's pretty hard to get to think because it's dark. 
but uh, that's his little spot there. He always hangs out there during the day. He'll come out if I put some food in. Um, so, you know, if you guys uh, see everything else fish-wise is doing good. Just took a hit on a coral and my clam, unfortunately. Um, but in this game and this hobby, you got to just keep it pushing forward. You know, things are going to die. Um, and, and just uh, try to make sure your parameters are where they should be, which they were. Just that, that pH drop just kills everything, as you can see. Um, but, you know, some corals can handle different uh, ways when something happens. Something with nitrates or nitrites, uh, if they go high, you know, some corals might react different than the others. Fortunately, the, uh, mainly my ground ones. Uh, and fortunately, mainly everything on the ground has died except for the Xenia. And Xenia is supposed to be like a weed almost. It's supposed to be one of the hardiest corals out there. And it is a hardy coral, but I, you know, it, it didn't take well to the uh, pH drop, and, and that's what happened. So, but tank's going to recover. Um, you know, eventually I'll get a couple more pieces for this tank and, uh, you know, let it thrive again. Uh, but uh, it's still doing, uh, it's still doing good. And there he is. There's my little coral croucher. He came out a little bit of that one. Looks like maybe we could get hungry. He's a cool little guy. Alright guys, for my next update, uh, you know, hope your tanks are doing well and uh, just hopefully you see these videos and, uh, you know, be careful what you put in your tank and Usually I am, but I just got nervous, and we all do, about if a fish gets sick. So we try to do the best I can. So um, it is what it is, but, uh, you know, looks like everything will be uh, okay in the long run. All right, guys, I'll see you soon.